At this time, our um, commander, Carl Clark, he will uh, address uh, the audience here this, at this time. Thank you. I'd just like to say thank you for coming out, and if you can, please stand and join me in uh, saluting the flag and saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, thank you all, all for coming out. I'd like to especially thank the Purple Heart recipients and, um, and thank you to the families. Everybody suffers in a situation like that, and I appreciate it. And I'd like to turn it over to uh, my senior vice, Dennis Elkins. Okay, like our commander said, we really appreciate everybody that came out, and, and it's hard to get a hold of our veterans. You know, you put out everything, and so many of them are sick, family sickness and all this. And I'm, I'm sure we got way more Purple Heart uh, veterans in Hawkins County than what has, you know, got back in touch with me or that's here today. So at this time, I'd like to read you just a little bit of history about our Purple Heart that will be presenting this lapel pin today. The Purple Heart is frequently described as the military's oldest medal. General George Washington created it in 1782 to recognize meritorious service, basically bravery in combat, but it soon fell to disuse. In 1932, to mark the bicentennial of Washington's birthday, General Douglas MacArthur spearheaded an effort to retrieve the medal, revive the medal. It was designated to commemorate bravery, but also recognize soldiers with wounds. Later, during World War II, the medal was changed into a recognition of combat injuries and death. Over time, the military has further modified the award, adding different types of injuries and different types of combat. For instance, soldiers wounded in acts of terrorism now qualify for the Purple Heart, as do soldiers in, injured in friendly fire. Today, the military has awarded an estimated 1.7 million Purple Hearts to soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen. Unlike other military awards, the Purple Heart is an entitlement. It does not depend upon the recommendation of a superior officer. Instead, the military gave it to those two troops that meet basic criteria. In general, the wounds must have occurred during hostilities and it must have required treatment that was documented by a medical officer. So at this time, we have uh, three Purple Heart recipients that are here today. Um, and then we've got a lady that her husband was also a Purple Heart recipient. So at this time, I'd like to, Carl, our commander is, is going to honor our Purple Heart recipients with a lapel pin. It's made similar to the uh, ribbon, but it's not got the ribbon on it. It's just a lapel pin. Um, at this time, would Dave Evans please come up here? Dave was in the Army in Vietnam, and you want to do it over here to the flag? <laughs> and uh, Dave served two tours in Vietnam. She's watching granddaughter on the phone. She's on the granddaughter on the phone right there. She can see you on the video, Dave. <laughs> Wave to the phone. <laughs> Okay, at this time, would Larry Johnson please come up? Larry was in the Army during the Vietnam War, too.
Okay, at this time, would Ron Zellner please come up? Ron is also in the Army and he's also a Vietnam veteran. Okay, at this time, would uh, Regina Kroger and her granddaughter please come up? Come on. Postums. Postums. Okay. Okay, Regina is going to receive a Purple Heart pin in honor of her husband, David Kroger. David was a Vietnam veteran. He was wounded in the Army. He was wounded in Vietnam. here today that their a husband or a brother or whatever uh, had received a purple heart okay yeah my father earned one with his death in germany in 1940 okay we would ask jim martin to come up please and receive one for his father The reason we're doing this, this is stuff that can be passed on down. We want to honor the ones that, you know, receive the Purple Heart or whatever, but can be passed on down to grandchildren and different people, you know, to keep that memory alive. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. What's, what's, what's his father's Jim. name? Jeff. Jeff. What's your father's name? James Joseph. James Joseph Martin. Martin. Okay, anyone else here? Okay, come up, Ron. My stepson, Charles Dupree, was wounded in Iraq in 2005. So my wife, you might say, is a double Purple Heart mama. Okay, <laughs> well, fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Have I missed anyone else? Okay. Come on up. Okay, just uh, I want to read you a couple other things here about the Purple Heart. Um, in 1932, uh, General Douglas MacArthur revived the Purple Heart on the bicentennial of Orson birthday. The medal is primarily designed to recognize notorious service. The Purple Heart is also given to soldiers wounded or killed in battle. Mac MacArthur was given Purple Heart number one. He received the very first Purple Heart. In 1943, John F. Kennedy was wounded in action that resulted in a Purple Heart. He is the only president to have received the honor. In 1944, Major General Robert T. Frederick is awarded his eighth Purple Heart that is believed to be the record for any soldier in a single conflict. So during that one conflict, he had received eight Purple Hearts. So, um, Turn it over to you. 
Dennis, thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. And I'd like uh, to thank Dennis, my uh, senior vice, for uh, organizing this and inviting everyone here. I'd like to thank JD, my junior vice, you know, for assisting in the setup and everything. And again, I would like to thank each and every one of you guys for coming out. And again, you guys are welcome here at the VFW Post anytime you'd like. Thank you for that. Very good. Thank you. Thank you.